This is Shelley Craft. We are coming to you live on SNN Live, and we are on location. We're at the Science and Technology Park at Johns Hopkins here in Baltimore, Maryland. With me is Dr. Sarah Sukumar, Professor Sukumar, professor at Johns Hopkins University. She is also the winner of the Bio Maryland Life Award, and in this case, LIFE stands for Leading Innovative Faculty Entrepreneur. So congratulations, first of all, and welcome to SNN Live. Thank you very much, Shelley, and thanks for having me here. It's good to have you. Now, I want you to take a minute before we move on to tell our audience the 30,000 overview or the 30-second elevator pitch, <laughs> either one that you feel comfortable with. Tell us what the company does. So uh, I run a laboratory. I'm the co-leader of the breast cancer program at the Sydney Kimmel Cancer Center at Johns Hopkins. And during the course of our research, we do a number of projects that are all translational, trying to improve the lives of women with breast cancer. So the, uh, the project that I'm bringing to the table today is about detecting breast cancer DNA, free DNA circulating in the bodies of patients with breast cancer. And so this technology is able to find this rare DNA species. It's like finding a needle in a haystack. But we have developed the technology and the method to be so accurate as to be able to detect these circulating DNA in the blood of patients with metastatic breast cancer. So by using this technology, we would be able to tell whether the patient has developed metastasis to breast cancer and hopefully uh, the method is being honed to such a great extent that it will be able to tell that the patient is able to respond to the therapy that they are being given. Usually response to therapy, uh, finding out whether they have responded to a therapy takes a few months but with our test we hope that within weeks we'll be able to say that this patient is responding to this therapy and this patient is not and so the oncologist will have the opportunity to change the course of that ship that's really not working right now to something that will work. I need a minute to digest that because my mind is racing about how you go about doing this. This is such breakthrough technology. Uh, I, I, I want to know everything from how you found it, how you developed it, how you, what do you have. Let's start out with what you won the award for. How are you going to commercialize this? Right. So the, the award I won was to find out whether we are able to predict whether a patient will respond to a particular therapy or not. And the way we do it is, answering one of your questions, is that we use genes that are methylated. Methylated just means that a particular sequence in DNA has suddenly developed a signal, this red signal. And when that develops, that gene shuts down. And so what we found with our very early research is that in breast cancer, hundreds of these genes get completely shut down because it's really helpful for the cancer cell to shut them down so that they can keep growing, they can be resistant to drugs, they can metastasize to various parts of the body, etc. So we decided to use this ability of that DNA, of the breast cancer DNA, to become methylated to our advantage because we can detect those methylated DNAs very clearly even in a large pool of normal DNA. And so now in the blood, there's thousands and thousands of molecules of normal DNA but with our technology called quantitative multiplexed methylation specific PCR, we are able to just zoom in on that little bit of DNA that was shed from the tumor and pick it up and say, hey, there's tumor DNA in here and we think that this person has distant metastasis. So we are able to do that. So what did we do with the prize money? The prize money was to find out for ER negative breast cancer, they come into the clinic, can we tell whether this patient should receive one kind of therapy or should they receive another kind of therapy? And we believe that for ER negative breast cancers, these methylated markers will be key to 
distinguish between patients so that we are able to say give them this treatment, give them this other treatment or the other. What does it all boil down to? Tailored treatment. And indeed we believe that the methylated markers in each person's tumor will be able to tell us that secret. What should we be treated with? Or should we be left well alone? Because even just having surgery and radiation is sufficient for most ER negative breast cancer patients. So we would be able to stop over treatment and we'll be able to direct the treatment to the people who need it and avoid it in the people who don't. You're my favorite. I love this. Um, I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to lighten in any way uh, how important the work is that you do. Uh, how are you going to commercialize it? I, I, I know it, 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 you know, it, you have to make money. You, you know, you have to, somebody has to make money on this stuff. And I, it's not for me about how you make money, but it's about for investors wanting to know how you make money. So I know the award was granted because of your ability to have developed a methodology for commercialization of this technology. So I want to get that out so that people understand that this isn't just in the science lab. Absolutely. In fact, the kind of markers we've developed, you know, the selection of the markers has taken a long time and a lot of research. But now we believe that we have this set of markers that is able to distinguish one type of breast cancer patient from the other. We are also able to use this information to be able to detect breast cancer DNA in the blood. So we think right now if you look at the commercial palette so to speak, really there isn't. There aren't methylation markers or there are no circulating DNA markers available in that are commercialized so far. We believe that this is a very sturdy marker set because it is detected in the DNA, which is extremely stable. You send it from here 5,000 miles away at room temperature, it will stay stable. And so there's no fuss about how the you know, sample is prepared and so on. So we believe that using this, we would be able to commercialize with the help of our partners, be able to commercialize a test that would be robust reproducible, sensitive, and specific for cancer. And unfortunately, and fortunately, there is a large enough market to make this become a very, very profitable enterprise, I would, I would suggest. Absolutely. You know, we all know that more than 200,000 women are diagnosed with breast cancer every year. And on a worldwide scale, it's millions. And so we know that this is going to affect a large body of women all through the world. And so this is what we have to keep in mind. It's a global disease now. And it keeps on rising in even the Southeast Asian countries. If that is the case, the market is large. We need a test for these women. We have already patented this technology. And this will be is through the Johns Hopkins Patenting Office. And indeed, I would urge all of our listeners to pay attention to this technology. What's your background? My background is a PhD in biochemistry and molecular biology. And I am an artist as well. I sing <laughs> classical music. And so I, I have a wonderful life in the laboratory. So what brought you to Maryland? Uh, Bert Vogelstein. <laughs> but that's, that's saying it lightly. I was invited to come to join Johns Hopkins to start the breast cancer program. There was no basic research program here. This was 18 years ago, wow. and it's been a roller coaster ride, a beautiful ride, and I'm very, very happy I came here because, after all, Johns Hopkins is the best institution which encourages translational research and helps us with these hopes and dreams about curing breast cancer to be able to realize those dreams. Now, this is important because many women <coughs> watch our interviews. Husbands of women, obviously, watch fathers and sons and daughters. You know the whole world out there is interested in breast cancer. Please, give us your website. We don't have a website, but I can give you my email address. Even better, if you don't mind. We don't mind. It's sares at jhmi.edu. Please feel free to write to me 
and ask your questions. Because I have a feeling she enjoys answering them. So, ladies and gentlemen, and you can go to info at SNN Wire and we'll forward any information also to Sarah. This is an important topic. Sarah, uh, uh, Dr. Sukumar, I, I want to thank you for coming on to SNN Live. It's a pleasure knowing you. Keep up the wonderful work that you're doing. I mean, I, on behalf of, of all women and people who are affected by breast cancer, I just want to thank you for your work. And thank I, you very I much. It. Thanks it's for a pleasure. SNN Live.